Um, hi, everyone. I'm David Rogers from Oak Ridge National Labs National Center for Computational Sciences. Um, here at Oak Ridge National Lab, I act as a liaison to project teams using Summit and um, do some testing on the Frontier supercomputer. And I'm also part of the um, IDEAS uh, ESSW um, tutorial project. So I'll be presenting today on uh, multiple aspects of software testing, including the testing walkthrough and um, some material on advanced testing and, uh, and also continuous integration. Um, these are these are kind of um, this talk in particular is very closely tied to our hands-on material, which will will give you a sense of, of how to kind of get your feet wet and start uh, doing some of these things. So after the last um, talk on on definitions and ideas of testing, um, hopefully this one will will start to give you the um, the the actual uh, nuts and bolts of of getting things done. It's also difficult to switch slides. Oh, but it does work. All right, so everyone should be seeing the Hello Numerical World test example. Okay, let's take that silence as a um, affirmative. Um, in our Hello Numerical World test example, it, um, it provides a kind of a here, here's a, a summary of the lines of code in every um, in every file for the example, and you can see that this is a um, an example of a of a smallish scientific project that's just you know getting off the ground and starting to to build up into um, into the point where it needs some some refactoring and design and thought about the future. It's um, let's see, it's a it's a set of parsing and you know, kind of um, a main function and utilities, along with some some nice modularized small um, kernels. And even large scientific codes have the same basic layout with with a main function and um, and isolated kernels, ideally, so that you can start to offload them to different accelerators, and um, and so that you can you can change your kernels independently of changing your main code. Uh, which will really help you to to um, develop for new architectures. The question, though, when we start to think about testing this sort of uh, setup, is how do we support testing all of these different kernel configurations? And if we start to, you know, if we start to change accelerator backends and we start to change systems that we're compiling for and compilers that we use, all of these things should still work. So ideally, we want a testing setup that lets us that lets us um, look at how changes in the code are affecting changes in our results. The first question that you'd come up against is what exactly do we test? Uh, there are examples in this tutorial of, of ways to kind of pick out your testing strategy. And, and I will save those for a little bit later. Um, for now, I wanna mention that the, the simplest kind of test that, that we could think of for this, um, for this heat example, uh, heat equation code, is to test whether or not our uh, current solution blue here is uh, current solution as a function of x is matching the exact solution as a function of x, and the error is you know the difference between the two solutions. So we want to do some sort of uh, difference in function space. Um, and so in order to to execute that kind of test. Uh, really, we have to run the code. Um, it goes through all of the lines, calls a numerical kernel, outputs the um, exact and the current result. Um, we could also think about uh, making sure that our options parse bad cases detected, right? So, so bad input cases. We could test our utility functions, et cetera. Um, this steady state test is the one I talked about. There are other tests that we could think of as well. Um, things that come from kind of the domain idea, the, the domain knowledge of this equation. In particular, the, um, the differential equation that is the heat equation has a, um, has a simple kind of reference. If you put in a sine function, then its second derivative should be negative a squared. It should, should be the, the function again times constant. So that can be used to do a, uh, a test versus exact as a function of time. And you might also, um, as, the, as 
more codes get added. So in the future, you might also make sure that you are in testing the integrations between the codes. So if we attach a library, we would really want to test that interface. Um, and of course, we, we could do things like testing in multiple precisions. And you'll see some of that inside of the source code that there, there's a way to run it in multiple precisions. Um, but I'm not going to get a chance to go over that today. So what does the test look like? Um, from a high level, it looks like running make check all or make check. And that make file um, is kind of the, the easiest way to, to document um, and actually document as, as code um, how you're running your test and to be able to reproduce your test. Um, in this case, what happens when you run make check all is the make file reminds you that you meant to do um, compile the um, compile the heat equation and then run the heat equation with, uh, with a specific set of parameters that says to run it until a steady state. Once it reaches a steady state, it'll output its curve. And there's a nice little um, check.sh uh, shell script, which will check the difference or find the difference um, between these two curves. And of course, there's different norms you could use. Um, in this case, it's just going to be the, the max uh, absolute value difference, so like a, an L infinite norm. If make completes, then the command succeeded. Um, and I'm sure you've all run make before. So um, obviously, if, if make is um, is completing successfully, then that means that none of these commands returned an error code. The idea with testing um, with shell scripts is just that the shell script returns an error code or a non-zero if the commands fail. All right, so what I wanna do in this module is examine, um, is examine the tests as they are and examine how you might replace those with, uh, with the CMake process. One, because, um, well, there's a bunch of advantages to CMake, um, but also just because this lets us see the tests in both lights and your project might sooner or later come to the point where you're considering adopting CMake and, and replacing the make file. Um, a lot of projects get to this point when they want to add um, they want to add features like support for multiple compilers and 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 they don't want to have to deal with all the compile flags. Uh, what does CMake do for us? It replaces make rules that were um, if you write make files, you write a rule that produces a, a target um, from a set of source files. Well, CMake replaces those rules with definitions of targets, and every target is tied to a list of source files or it's tied to a, a bunch of um, the inputs that the target uses in order to produce its output. So it's a lot like a make rule, but targets can actually have attributes, which is um, how the cross-platform um, compile rules are supported. So if you create a target that's, a, that's an executable from C++, you can give it a target link libraries attribute um, like MPI, MPI, CXX. And just by giving it that attribute, CMake will know that it needs to link in um, MPI and include the MPI headers during compile and link steps. If you add target include directories, um, usually you don't have to add target include directories for external libraries because that, that's part of target link libraries, which is neat. Um, if you have your own include directories, you can give it target include directories to point your programs to those directories. You can also add things like target compile features. Um, that can give you the correct flag, uh, which changes from compiler to compiler in order to get uh, the compiler to recognize your code is supposed to be a certain C++ standard. Target compile features can also be used uh, to, to do things like uh, selecting, um, selecting the, the GPU SM level. Make, uh, CMake list provides a find package command, which if you're familiar with automake, um, one of the killer features of GNU automake um, and autoconf is that it allows you to go and look for external packages and then it gives you flags for those. With CMake, you look for external packages and then use target link libraries. Um, and all of this you get to do in the walkthrough. So I don't want to spend too much time on it here. Um, so uh, CMake also provides you a nice way to do testing, which replaces kind of manually entering your make check targets with a ctest command. And ctest then goes and finds its, its uh, list of tests and runs them. So the end result of this tutorial is we'll get to contrast these two methods. The, um, the existing make file, um, as you'll see in the, the walkthrough, is um, kind of the, the standard 
here's a rule for compiling a C program, and here's a rule for compiling your, um, your ending program. In CMake, it looks a lot more complicated, um, but part of that complication is because I hid other parts of the make file. Um, let me just go through these lines kind of quickly, and I want to point you at the, the tutorial, which goes through how to add these steps, um, how to add these, how to create the CMake list step by step. CMake has two required pieces that are CMake minimum required and project. And um, those tell you, you know, what version CMake needs to be and, and give CMake an idea of your project name, a version, and the languages that it uses. You can create options. This is uh, an option that users will see when they call CMake on your program to build it. You can also have CMake generate files, um, like to take an input version.h and then create an output version.h, which has some of the CMake flags built in. So we'll show how to do that, where um, the version.h will now have the version baked into it um, so that the source code can see its version. Um, this add executable creates a target uh, heat, which requires these sources to compile. Um, and this replaces the make rule for, for heat as a function of um, needing all of these input files. Here's the target compile features we talked about, target include directories, and this install rule generates a, a make install target so that you can install heat into a, a bin destination. So that's the full CMake list file that you need in order to, to compile this code. Um, even though it looks complicated, everything has a, has a purpose and um, CMake runs with it. The existing tests currently uh, call the program heat and then run the check.sh. Um, we can create a test driver to run the executable, check the results and clean up the outputs. So what I wanna do is make one shell script which will, which will do these different commands and then CMake can invoke that shell script. How do we add that shell script to CMake lists? I'll show an example of isolating that shell script into tests. So we'll make a test subdirectory Test will have a cmakelist.txt of its own. This is the entire contents of cmakelist.txt inside of the test directory. Um, and the add test command for cmake is how you, how you tell cmake that you have a new test. First, we enable testing. Here's adding a test called um, heat help, which is gonna run the heat program with the option help. Here's add a test for the Crank Nicholson uh, integration scheme. So we'll use add test, we'll run our test driver, We'll tell it where the heat program is and we'll tell it some options. And that provides um, CMake with what it needs to, to go and you know, create this test and run it when you type ctest. You can see that there's a lot of potential for programmatically creating tests because CMake lets you make functions and it makes you, lets you make for loops. So you could, um, you could add a list of tests in this way to CMake. Um, as a bonus, the example swaps out the test driver, so just so that you get a, a chance to try and um, to try your hand at at shell scripting or or programming to, to test the um, L1 or L infinite norm, whatever you decide to do. It's important to go in um, to understand the, the mechanics of actually testing the difference between the two functions, um, because that's kind of the heart of the the test code that you should be really familiar with as the, the scientific programmer. What does it look like when you run it? Um, as you run the CMake, <clears throat> so if you, you know, put these two CMakes in, in place and you want to compile your program, now there's not simply a make step. <clears throat> you first run the CMake step, which generates a make file, um, and then you make, you can make parallel, and um, then you can run the tests by changing it to the test directory and running ctest. Here are the testing results. Um, I went ahead and added tests for, for the three different um, for the three different integration schemes. And you can see that they're running, they give you a time, they tell you that they're passed. And um, that's that. So you get a nice, you know, colorful 100% tests passed output. In conclusion, um, you always want to start your project small and stay organized. Make files are great for providing a fast development path and documenting your workflows. Um, it's important to add tests before the project complexity grows. Uh, so that so that you can always keep tests on your roadmap. Um, it is good to um, to have a make check target to kick off those tests as well. <clears throat> as your project starts to get larger, um, you might want to put in CMake or AutoConf to help make your build more port portable. It provides things like finding packages, programmatic build options, 
and setting uh, target properties so that CMake can look up those compiler flags for you. Um, and of course, there are good testing strategies for both. And this tutorial kind of gave you the, the look from, from both sides of, of how testing, um, really the heart of testing is, is checking that everything, running your program and checking that the outputs are correct and the, um, the, the build system is there to make that happen. Do we have questions for this module?